Photoshop is going crazy with the updates, releasing some of the biggest features ever. And in this video, I'm going to share with you all the six new features and updates, both in Photoshop general release and Photoshop beta for July and August. So without any further ado, let's get started. Our lovely remove tool has now been improved and you can now remove stuff in a variety of ways. For example, if you choose the lasso tool, you can just make a selection around the stuff that you want to remove and you will see a brand new remove button in the contextual taskbar. If you're not able to see this, right click outside the canvas and click on show contextual taskbar. Then simply click on remove and it uses a brand new generative AI technology to remove stuff which is enhanced for removing and it's gone. Here's the before, here's the after. This has been so improved that you don't even have to worry about super accurate selection around the edges. For example, if you were to select the object selection tool and select this entire person by clicking here. Even if the selection is not entirely accurate, as you can see, these areas are missing out. Sorry about that flickering. If you click on remove, you will notice that she is accurately gone with no weird edge artifacts. You might have noticed that as we are applying remove time and again, it's creating brand new remove layers. You'll see this new setting inside of the remove tool. Let's select the remove tool from here. It will be inside of the healing group. Once you select that at the top, you'll see the setting called create new layer. If you have this checked every time you remove something, for example, I'm going to remove this lamp pretty quickly. You will notice that it creates a brand new layer just for that area. If you don't want that to happen, you can uncheck that, create new layer. And then when you apply it again, this area looks a bit patchy. It will do it in the exact same layer. In the earlier versions, the remove tool would sometimes replace an area with another object instead of removing it. But right now, if you try to remove it, for most of the times, it does a much better job. You now have the option to pick between different Firefly models when applying Generative Fill or Generative Expand. I already have a selection here. If I click on Generative Fill, you'll see a brand new button. Click here. We can choose either Firefly Image Model 1 or Model 3. For instance here, let's write water. Right now it is using Firefly Model 3 to fill it and here are the results. The first one, second one, not as good. Third one, this is crazy. Let's try Model 1. You can also do it from here or from here as well. Let's pick Model 1 and with the same prompt, click on Generate. Use these to decide what works better with your projects. And in this case, this does look interesting. First one, second one, third one. Some weird results, but you get the point. You have the choice. And as you're scrolling through the options, it will tell you whether it used Firefly Image Model 3 or Image Model 1. The next update is a little one, but can be very useful for workflows. Let's say you design something, like I designed this thumbnail for a previous video, and you want to directly share it to an app without having to export it. You can go to Share, Send to Apps, this is new, and you can directly send it to Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, or you can choose Slack or other apps. If you're on a Mac, you can also click on AirDrop and directly from inside of Photoshop, it will go to your phone or whatever other device that you want. You can also directly send it to Mail, Messages, and many other relevant apps. Now coming to the biggest feature in Photoshop beta that absolutely revolutionizes Photoshop compositing. Here we have a background. On top of that, we have our subject. Completely different lighting setup. Let us click on this button to absolutely entirely easily automatically remove the background and it does an incredible job. And then you'll see a brand new button called Harmonize. Let's click on it and it automatically matches the color of the subject with that of the background. See the light was coming from the left hand side and it was the sunlight similarly here as well. Here's the before and here is the after. What is this? Here's the first option, second option and third option. You get three options and it also created the shadow according to the sunlight. If you don't like it, you can click on generate one more time and you get three more options and you can pick one that you like. Maybe this one or this one whatever that suits you best. I would actually blur the background just a little bit, but you get the point. Here's the before, see? Entirely different studio light, and here is the after. Now the quality and the resolution might take a hit, and there are some limitations to this tool, which we will discuss later. It not only matches the color and the lighting like it did in this example, but it can also create shadows. Here's another example. I've already masked the apple out. It's a different apple from a different scene. Once that layer is selected, let's click on Harmonize in the contextual taskbar. Here you have your three options, first, second, third, all of them good. Not only did it create the shadow here, here's the before, nothing is matching, here's the after. It also created a bit of the reflection that should be there in that particular table. Here's the before, no reflection here, here is the after. 
you see there is. I've made a dedicated video about the harmonized feature where we go through a lot more examples and also talk about the limitations which you can watch right here, right after watching this video. The next new amazing feature is generative upscale and as the name suggests, it uses AI to upscale an image. Here we have a very small image which is just 600 by 600 pixels. And as soon as we zoom in just a little bit, it starts to pixelate. Now to upscale it, you can simply go to image, generative upscale. Now you'll notice that this is quite different. If you've watched other videos on Photoshop updates, the thing is, right now I'm using Photoshop beta version 26.10. All of these new features were actually released with version 26.9. And in that version, there was a creativity option, which we don't have right now with 26.10. Again, let's go to image, generative upscale. You just have to choose how much upscaling you want. I want 4x, which means four times. It is 600 by 600, right? So 600 multiplied by four, 2400 by 2400. Let's click on upscale. After applying generative upscale, it creates a brand new document where your image is upscaled, as you can see, while keeping the original one as is. It is still 600 by 600. Let's open this up and let's take a look at the before and after. So here is the before. Here's how it was. It actually changes the image. Here is the after. You can see it has a little more detail. Similarly, if you have a look at the clothes, here's the before, less details. Here's the after. It actually tries to create some of the jewelry details. But overall, it kind of makes the image slightly soft before, after. Now keep in mind, of course, there's a limited generative upscale, which is 4096 pixels. So if you were thinking we could just double it one more time by going to image, generative upscale, it just won't let you do it. If you choose 4X, see, it will tell you the warning. Generative upscale does create some interesting details. Here's another image, which is just 1000 pixels wide. And as soon as we zoom in, you can see that this is clearly very much pixelated. Let me show you another way to apply generative upscale. But before that, if you're not able to see the dimensions of the image here, click on the small arrow. You wanna make sure document dimensions is checked so you can see the dimensions of your document. Now let's go to image image size. Inside of that as well, as you can see the image size, you can go to generative upscale by clicking here. So that's just another way. Let's go 4x upscale. So here we have the upscale document. Let's zoom in and have a look at the before and after. Here is the before. As you can see, very less detail. And here is the after. You can see the difference right there. Before, after. So that's what generative upscale does. But keep in mind, generative upscale will not deduct generative credits while in beta. Does that mean it will cost you credits in the regular version? Only time will tell. The next new feature is the projects feature. When you open Photoshop beta in the home screen, you'll see this projects section. Let's click on that. What it does is that it allows you to share your files and projects and Photoshop documents and collaborate through it with a lot of people. So you can click on create project. Let us name this project Fix Imperfect and click on create. Now it will give you an option to add people to collaborate. For example, hello at the rate email.com and many other emails. And you can choose whether they can edit or just comment. Click on invite. And now you have your project. You can add files here, Photoshop project here, and collaborate with a lot of people. So which was your favorite update? And what is your suggestion for improvement? Maybe Adobe is reading this. Let us talk about it in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks, or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. What can I do?